JFT just fair and direct. Good morning everyone and welcome to JFD's daily market review for March the 29th. I am Haralamos Pistros, head of research here at JFD, and I will talk about yesterday's main market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events and how they could affect the markets. But before we start, let's read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire, to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds uh, to read the rest and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, the US dollar traded higher against uh, most of the other major currencies on Monday during the Asian session Tuesday, gained the most versus NZD, AUD, and GBP in that order, while it underperformed only against the Euro. The Grimac was found virtually unchanged against the Swiss franc. The relative strength of the US dollar in the safe haven franc suggests uh, that markets may have traded in a risk of fashion yesterday and today in Asia. However, the strength of the risk linked Aussie and Kiwi points otherwise, and indeed, turning our gaze to the equity world, we see that uh, major European and US indices traded in the green, with the only exception being UK's FTSE 100. Appetite stayed supported uh, during the Asian session today as well. Among the stock indices under our radar, only China Shanghai Composite uh, lost some ground. Maybe that's because several Chinese cities entered uh, new lockdowns uh, due to the fast spreading of, um, of the coronavirus. Now, with no dramatic events to change the course of the markets, most equity indices uh, continue to, to respect their latest path of least resistance, which is to the upside. What may have helped investors to add to their risk exposures may have also been the fact that diplomats from Russia and Ukraine will hold new, new peace talks today in Turkey. Although officials played down uh, the chances of a major break breakthrough, the fact that we have a new round of talks allows a glimpse of hope that some, co some progress could be made, no matter how small it is. Now, our, our own view remains the same as last week, despite the war still going on in Ukraine, and despite most major central banks beginning their tightening cycles, we still believe that equities could continue trading higher uh, for a while more. And this is for the same reasons we mentioned last week. We observed that the setbacks in negative headlines are smaller than the advances we get when there is hope, while uh, the increasing expectations over a more aggressive rate path by the Fed seem to have not affected the attractiveness of major growth stocks. In our view, this means that uh, barring any other nation getting involved militarily in the war, the conflict at a two-nation uh, level may have been already priced in, something which may, be, may also be true uh, with regards to an aggressive tightening path um, uh, by, by by the Federal uh, Reserve. However, we are still far from calling for a long-lasting recovery. Yes, we do expect uh, <clears throat> further recovery in equity indices and other risk-linked assets, but we prefer to take th things step by step. And uh, in other words, we prefer to focus on the short-term picture for now. After all, the war is still raging and the chances uh, of escalating to something worse are not zero. What's more, although the US uh, yield curve remains very steep uh, up until the two-year um, yield, uh, the, three, the 3 to 30 year uh, part has flattened with some, um, with some smaller parts being inverted for the, first, for the first time since early 2006. This suggests that markets participants believe that the Fed tightening plans will put the brakes on economic growth in a few years. Now, as uh, for today's events, like uh, yesterday, the calendar is, uh, is very light. Uh, 
uh, with the only releases worth mentioning being uh, being uh, Germany's um, retail sales for February, the US Conference Board Consumer Confidence Index for March, and then George's uh, job openings um, uh, for February. So that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and listening. For those who are interested in learning about the main events of the week much earlier, you can subscribe to the weekly Market Outlook webinar, which I'm holding every Monday at 7 o'clock a.m. GMT. At <clears throat> this point, I will need to let you know that there will be no weekly Market Outlook uh, webinar uh, next Monday on April 4th, neither on April 11th. So uh, I hope I will see you on the next scheduled webinar, which is for April the 18th. You can find the link in the description below. So, goodbye, have a great day, and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again tomorrow for our daily market review. JFT, just fair and direct.